it's been a funny old week. My uncle Anthony uh, came to visit. Giles found out. He assumed that I wanted him to pretend that I ran the place. That he was one of my minions, so to speak. I told him that wasn't the case and uh, Anthony, or Tone, couldn't care less about me. I don't know why I bother speaking to him, because this isn't true. It's just something I tell Giles to shut him up. He wouldn't come to see me if he didn't. Anthony, or Tone, as he likes to be called, is known for his stationery. I don't mean he's not going anywhere, I mean he sells stationery. He was on his way to meet a client, that's why he stopped by. Actually, business deals in stationery and sign making, like road signs or mind your head signs. How those two merged, I don't know. Maybe his client stuck his head out of the car one too many times. Of course, it was the usual, come on, you know, let's go out on the town, and when's Thresher's week again? When he finished going on about alcohol, we talked about my love life, or rather lack of it. You really ought to find yourself a girlfriend, carry on the good Spicer name. Personally, I never thought Spicer was a good name. It makes you sound like a package holiday company. But he obviously thinks differently. I tell him I've got a girlfriend, Geraldine. But that with my radio station slot and my course, it's difficult to find time for her. He tells me that I must, and that he's going to help me, starting with my clothes. His precise words were, I've never been a girl in my 20s, but I wouldn't go out with you. Perhaps, you know, if you smartened up or changed hair gels or something. I've told him. It always comes down to money. Instead of just offering me the money to buy my own clothes, he insisted on going shopping with me. Now, I'm not a good shopper at the best of times, but to have your uncle in his fifties wandering around telling me what's hot and what's not, and getting it completely wrong too. He thought a black shirt with yellow stars on it would look good on me. I was beginning to get rather peeved by the whole exercise. Sod it, I thought. Just get a suit. And if it doesn't work, I can use it in the future. And I haven't lost anything. Also, if it uh, gets my annoying uncle off my back. Okay, he said to me. What kind of suit? Well, I haven't thought that far ahead. Had to think of something quickly. Of course, I, I failed. A suit suit with extra suit. Shirt, trousers, and jacket. And, uh. I took another stab at it. Uh, buttons, sleeves, fly, stitching, collar, cuffs. Anthony thought I was being too vague. I'm normally so outgoing, apparently, which is family talk for loud. I just don't know suits. I just don't know them, okay? Sorry, sorry. I don't know what happened there. So, anyway, Anthony then went for the kill. Your friend Paxman wears a suit. Now, I usually like people mentioning Jeremy Paxman. There's something about your relatives liking what you like. Still, he's right. I found a pinstripe number. Been old fashioned, admittedly, but uh, it's going to be a long shot, whatever it is, isn't it? It needs to be pretty special for Geraldine. Anyway, having bought the suit, my uncle went off for his appointment. He was hoping that the stationers in the high street would buy a thousand of his left-handed address books. He's got no chance if you ask me, but what do I know about business? I'm a righty. Anyway, so I changed into the suit, bought Geraldine some half-sized flowers, looked at myself in one of the shop windows, found I hadn't combed back my hair, and went back to the flat to do so. After all this, I finally found Geraldine. The flowers didn't impress. She called them petrol station flowers. I don't know. I couldn't smell anything. I went out to drown my sorrows at the student bar and wondered if I could find someone who wanted to buy a suit from me. In hindsight, it might have been better to change before going out, but hindsight's always 2020, isn't it? Some chaps at the bar were saying, Ooh, he's a la dar you know. I didn't recognise them. Perhaps they don't listen to the show. Or maybe they were part of that lot who were rioting outside my studio that time. I don't know. 
but I'm certainly not lardy da and I don't know what gave them that impression. So I just got back to my lemon and line and, you know, just did a sort of casual nod. But they had to come over and taunt me. I tried to tell them that we're practically the same and I just want to be left alone. Then another one butts in, questions whether I'm even a student. Mad. Things were getting a bit annoying now. He claimed I was just after a cheap drink. They were obviously first years. So I, um, flashed my student card. Still, it was no good. They thought I had forged the card. Apparently because I was, quote unquote, loaded. One of them called me a criminal and posh. A posh criminal? Mad. Who do they think I was? Rupert Murnau? So I I took my jacket off to say I didn't need it and everything, you know. This should have worked, but but the guys had got into their head that this was some sort of male strip tease and started crying off, off, off. I tried to get Jeff, who uh, runs the bar, to chuck them out, but he just smiled at me and got on with cleaning the glasses. I don't think student bars work in the same way as usual ones. I had enough of this. They were all surrounding me and I felt I had to be the big man and leave. As I stood up to go, Jeff from behind the bar ran up to me and pulled down my trousers in one fell swoop. I was motionless and all I could hear was this roar of laughter. I looked down for, for some reason I, I, I just couldn't react but then I see this lady walking over to me. Rather smart sort, you know. She at least wasn't laughing, but she looked mortified. I'm trying to meet a client here. I tried to look as respectable as possible, you know, which wasn't easy without waddling somewhat. I explained that it wasn't my fault and that, that it was Jeff. But naturally, Jeff had disappeared at this point. So not only am I standing there trouserless, there seems absolutely no reason to justify it. Not that there's ever a good reason for a man with his trousers around his ankles. It's just, I don't know what I'm saying. I try to be as polite as possible. I asked her who she was meeting. She tells me, and it's Giles. She says she likes the way I handle having no trousers on and offers me her card. And I attempt to place it in my trouser pocket. My trousers aren't pulled up. We both watch it drop to the floor. She can't help but smile. I pick up both the card and my trousers again in one fell swoop. Reading the card, I see it says Vanessa Bravo, media representatives. A bloody talent scout. Despite what had happened up till then, discovering that was the worst moment of my day. So what do I do now? Well, I was told never to overlook an opportunity, however surreal it might be. So I told her that I was looking for representation. She asked me to send her my resume, as she didn't have any comedians on her books. At first I wondered why she told me that, but then I realised my trousers were still down. I could have corrected her then, but uh, I thought better of it. I agreed to send her my CV, pulled up my trousers and then left. On the way out I bumped into Giles and Jeff. They were laughing together which suggests to me that Giles may have something to do with how I ended up with my trousers around my ankles and my Mr. Ben boxes on show. So I decided to lie to him about Vanessa. I told him that something came up and she had to leave. He noticed my smirk and knew I was saving that moment. I lied to him and told him that I was sorry to hear his chance of getting representation had slipped away. I also felt like I needed to tell him that she liked me. For, as you can imagine, I was in quite a good mood at that time. He pushed off to lick his wounds and no doubt become stronger for our next encounter. I have indeed written to her with my resume. And guess what? I finally got representation. I just wish that I had got it in less uncomfortable circumstances. She still thinks I'm a commie. But representation is representation. I just have to make the best of things. You know, you, you soldier on, yeah? A slick style, I was told. Yeah, I quite like this style. Maybe I should wear these, uh, too. 
Although it's uh, not quite sunny enough, but you know. No, no, no. This woman's seen me trouserless. I better not do anything to aggravate her. Keep the deal sweet and all that. I've wasted my money with these, haven't I? Well, I'll meet her again in about a week's time or so. Good job I bought that suit then. Only I'm not wearing it in the student bar again. Oh, yes. I must get one of Anthony's left-handed notepads or Geraldine as well. That's if he's got any left. 